What's going on guys? Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets and welcome back to another episode on the JK One Ton Swap video series. Now, the last couple episodes we knocked out welding the truss onto our axles and now it is time to weld the actual trusses to the differential. Now, normal trusses are made out of mild steel and most modern day, uh, the actual differential portion is made of cast steel. It's very important to weld the truss, at least in a few spaces, to the actual cast steel, opposed to just making the welds on the axle tubes. It's gonna help strengthen up our truss, and it's very critical to make this weld correctly. Now, you'll also find cast steel uh, on your, your outer seas, your knuckles, so whenever you're welding to stuff like that, whether it's sea gussets on a Dana 44, welding a truss onto your Dana 30, lots of places have cast steel. It is different than cast iron, which is a completely different, whole different topic. It's a lot harder to weld to, but cast steel is pretty easy to weld to with a few steps. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. I don't want this to be an extremely long video um, because it's really not that hard. I'm gonna go ahead and say I am not a professional welder. I am not doing this to teach you guys. I'm just showing you what I do and what I've used in the past with good results on welding to cast steel. So. You're gonna need a bottle of map gas with a torch head that's designed for map gas, or you know, oxyacetylene or some other source of heat that can really heat this up to about four or 500 degrees. We also need a thermometer capable of reading our temperature because that's one of the main things of how we do this. So going to a real quick basics on how we're gonna do this. We are gonna preheat the metal, the cast, and the metal we are welding it to up to around 400, 500 degrees make our weld, and then slowly bring the temp down. We can bring the temp down by monitoring it with our heat gun and our map gas, or use a fiberglass welding blanket, wrap it up really tight, and let it cool slowly that way. But I prefer monitoring after and doing like a post heat treatment. Now what happens if we just, right here, welded to it? What's gonna happen is the cast steel and our mild steel, they're gonna cool at different rates, and the weld is just gonna crack right down the middle and we're gonna lose all structural integrity from that weld. So it's important to do this step correctly. It's really not hard. And I mean, you can get map gas, it's like $11 at Home Depot, infrared thermometer. You can find those pretty cheap at Home Depot for about 17, 20 bucks. So this is definitely a really critical step. I see a lot of people skipping this step and they don't weld the truss to the differential. I'm like, that's kind of stupid, you might as well. Um, another thing to notice is that a lot of times on these trusses, there can be a pretty big gap. Um, you know, luckily down here, there's no gap. Some spots right here don't have a big gap. Um, but if you do have a big gap, practice your welding. We'll do a lot of spot weld. Wow, that was a good catch. We'll do a lot of spot welds and then just fill it in with a weld. So I went ahead and did a section over here on my rear diff on the rear 14 bolt. And uh, that weld's done. That had a really big gap. So it's not an extremely pretty weld. It's a really thick, wide uh, bead, but we had to do that to fill that gap. But there's no cracks in there. I actually did a spot on the rear over here as well uh, last night. Just doing a little practicing before I made this video. But, oh man, we're already three minutes in. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's make a weld right here on this stitch right there. So what I'm doing, now that we're getting closer to the uh, the operating temp of 400, I'm going ahead and getting all my welding supplies ready, just so once it's actually at 400, we can start our welds. All right, we're looking pretty good. We're close to 400 degrees. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and make some tack welds all the way down this, just because the gap is pretty large and having multiple tack welds will help us from blowing through the metal. Now that we have all those tack welds, it is time to go ahead and reheat it again so these don't crack. While it's still hot, we're gonna make a weld all the way down. Try to do it one continuous weld. I'm gonna back my GoPro up a little bit.
All right, so we'll go ahead and check the temp. And I can tell that up here on the top where we started our weld has cooled down to about 412. And the place we just finished our weld is up in the 500s. So we're gonna go ahead and do a blast of heat up here. Go ahead and take a closer look. So like I was saying, since we are filling a gap, you're gonna have to do a nice thick weld. And let's check some of the temps here. Now, the cast is sitting at 350. The metal up here is a lot hotter right now because it absorbs the metal quicker. So what we're doing is going between, we're taking readings of the weld, our steel, and our cast steel. And we're gonna be just checking the differences between them and heating the lowest one up to kind of match the one up here just so they're not expanding and contracting or now they are contracting at a different rate from cooling so you don't want to start heating this up above what this is because then we're kind of defeating the purpose of a post heat so I'm gonna keep doing that and we're just gonna slowly and slowly bring down this temp until it's right around 200 degrees and then we're gonna wrap it up in a blanket over there this part can take a while anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes depending on how hot it actually got during the weld. Now we are going to repeat doing this until it is cooled down to 200. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera, but hopefully you guys get the gist. You preheat to 400 and then slowly bring this down and temp evenly. While this is slowly cooling down, still a little talking. A lot of people are from the like, oh Ben, why don't you just use the welding blanket to wrap it up and let it bring down in temp. This is a fiberglass welding blanket. You can get them at Home Depot, uh, online, Amazon. I'll throw a link to it. Or your Harbor Freight uh, if you have one in town. They're like 20, 30 bucks, not too bad. But some people will make this weld after they preheat it and then wrap this baby up nice and tight and just let it sit for 12 hours and really slowly cool down. Personally, you can do this and finish up this weld within a matter of 30 minutes by doing the post heat treatment. I, I, I don't like just wrapping this up and not knowing if it's gonna crack or not. I like almost having control and really checking these temperatures while it cools. Plus, I don't wanna sit here and wait for this weld to cool down for 12 hours. I got stuff to do. But we're gonna check and we're still pretty good. We'll have to blast it with heat here in a few minutes. But I like the quicker process and I almost like controlling it a little bit better. If you know what I'm saying, I don't trust just wrapping it up and praying for the best. But if you do want to just wrap it up and leave it, I mean, you're safe to do that. What I'd recommend is doing this, the fiberglass welding blanket first, go get some insulation or another big blanket and wrap that up too, because these are pretty thin. Uh, these are fire resistant so you don't have to worry about the blanket burning up. But I mean, we only heated it, heated it up to four or 500 degrees, so that's not too bad. Now, I did a really, really big weld here. On most diffs, you don't have to do all that. A little three inch weld up here, three inch weld down there, and over here would be more than enough. But I figured for this video, might as well weld. I was kinda, I was in the groove. I'm like, let's just weld it all up. I'll probably do the same down this side, weld the tubes here, and weld our tube, uh, our axle tube to our casting just because on the Super Duty we had to cut that back and we took off two plug welds and that's what holds the tubes inside the diff. So I really wanna weld that back, but we're gonna keep letting this cool. I'm kinda of rambling on now, uh, but as you can tell, it's really not hard to do this. Uh, just preheat and post heat. You know, if you just went up and welded it, it's gonna crack. You'll hear that ding. And I'm really hoping I don't hear that on this one because if the weld cracks, you can grind it down, weld it again, try, try the process again. One thing I'd recommend is having an extra can of map gas with you. I got one somewhere over there on the shelf, just in case during this post heat treatment, if we run out of gas and we're like, crap, don't crack, we just go and get more gas and keep heating it up. So let's check our temps. Yeah, our casting's down to about 250. The weld itself is up to about 290. And our truss is around 250 as well. So I'm just gonna heat up the cast and the truss area so our welds aren't hotter than the other materials. 
All right, well, our axles are fully welded completely. We are done with welding the trusses on the axle. So uh, last night I let them cool down really good and none of them have any cracks, so that is awesome. On the front axle, went ahead and welded the whole front section as well as the tubes to the axle all the way around. Now, that turned out great. Main reason I did that is just because we do have a link mount up here and it's really nice just to have that extra strength. You don't have to do that. You'd be fine with welding this section, this section, the tubes, and at least you know four inches up here on top. On the rear axle, as you can tell, I did the section down here as well as over there and about a 10 inch section up here on the top. Now, if we were planning on running uh, a, a triangulated four link with links up here or even a three link it'd be a pretty good idea to go ahead and finish these welds all the way down as well as on the other side but since I'm still running it in the stock location with the control arms actually out on the uh, you know on the axle truss over there there's plenty of weld down there so we don't really have to do that but as you can tell it's not a hard process it's definitely something that I would recommend doing uh, a lot of people kind of skip this because they're like, oh, welding to cast steel is a little bit difficult. It's not bad. Take your time, do the proper pre-treatment and post-treatment with heat, and it will be perfectly fine. You can either wrap it up in blankets or, like I did, and slowly bring it down temperature. You'll be good to go. Worst case scenario, if your, crack, if your weld cracks, grind it down and do it again. Uh, it's not the end of the world if your, your weld cracks because you can always... Smooth it out, do it again until you get it right. So thanks for watching, guys. Like always, give this video a thumbs up and stay tuned for the next video on the one-ton swap. I think we're going to be uh, tackling steering or gears and lockers next. So uh, kind of been dreading the gears and lockers portion because that is a very expensive part of this actual build. It's one of the most expensive parts, actually. But it'll be awesome to knock that out, and I am excited to get these under the Jeep. So thanks for watching. Peace.